here with Cal from Remix, and he's going to drive me through a demo of what Remix does. So, Cal, I'm on the keyboard. Show me what to do. Yes, actually, you're going to be driving, just to show that it's easy and fast to get started. Mm. So we're going to be doing a couple things to set up. We need a Postgres database to replicate data to and from our Stripe account. Excuse me. And we also need a network to share data between Postgres and Remix. So why don't you go ahead and copy the command under Network Setup and run it in the command line in VS Code. OK. OK, next. OK. We can scroll on. There is a Postgres Sorry. Oh. Safari. Bet you're used to Chrome. I am. <laughs> so next we need to set up Postgres, but we can't just use the normal Postgres image because we need the wall to json plugin installed to get CDC records. So copy the text in that box and create a new file in VS Code called Postgres SQL dot um, Docker file. And, and it anyway. should not be in the uh, files. It should be top level. So it's called Postgres. Postgres SQL dot Docker file. Just one S. Oh. Mm -hmm. Paste that in there. Okay, find the next command, which will build us the Docker image. Okay. Go ahead and run that. Okay, so now we've built the Docker image. We can run it. Go back to the guide. And there is a Docker run command. Got to make sure that you get all of it. It actually extends to the right a little bit. Yeah. OK. Yep. And now we have a running Postgres database locally. Now we need to create tables. So go back to the post. And this is the table we're going to be syncing data to and from. Actually, it's two tables. So go ahead and copy that Products whole command. And prices. Yeah, we're going to be syncing product and pricing data to and from our Stripe account to this database. Yep. All right, now if you would bring up PG Admin, I just want you to query the products and prices table just to show that they're there. You can just select that. And uh, I would actually se select it with your okay. cursor just so you're running one at a time. And, oh, oops. And go ahead and hit execute script. Continue, because we're connecting to a new database. Great. OK, you can see we have an empty table there. We don't need to do the other one. Yeah. Now we need to set up Remix. And configuring Remix consists of writing two kinds of files. You need to write JSON schema to define your canonical data models. And you need to write YAML, what I call Remix files. And Remix files are really important because they express how data is transformed when it comes in from the external systems to fit into the canonical data models. And then they also define how it needs to be remixed on the way out so that it will be accepted by those systems. So a remix is on the way in, remix is on the way out. Mm. You can scroll down. So we just ran that? Yep, we just ran that. We can keep going. And I already have a Stripe account set up. We don't need to do that. And here is the first thing that we need to do. I want you to copy that text and paste it in a file models slash product.json. And what that's doing is it's creating a data model that our business says, hey, this is what a product should look like, no matter where it comes from. It should somehow conform to this data. We should be able to transform it into this. So you can see that we have ID, name, default price ID. This is kind of like classic we are conforming our data model to Stripe's data model to make our lives easy. Sure. The demo will eventually uh, go to a point where we're actually adapting a different data model, but we can move on with this one. So go back, and we need prices.json as well, or just price.json. Go ahead and paste that. Cool. And now we need to create the remix files. And we create a remix file for each system. Scroll on. Prod DB, this is our database. Uh, 
and I won't go into it too much here, but go ahead and create a file systems slash proddb.yaml. Mm -hmm. And if I may for just a second, the key here is receive mixer is defining how we transform data on the way in to fit in the models. And the push mixer is what defines how the data is transformed from the canonical data models to fit into Postgres. And let's do the same thing with Stripe, mm -hmm. our payment gateway. So that's payment-gateway.yaml. Uh, cool. And now we can run it. So there should be a startup command down there mm -hmm. that is going to pull the latest Remix Docker image and run it locally. All right. Okay. Now what we can do is, oh, huh, we forgot to replace the API key for Stripe. Sure. So if we scroll to the top, you can see the payment gateway. We need to get our Stripe dashboard API key. Go ahead. I bet you know where that is. Here's a tab. Sorry, up here. Yeah, right there. So that's going to be under the home. And then on the right is the secret key is the one we need. Okay, you can control C in the command line a couple times. And you'll actually have to delete the container as well before you run it again, so I can do that one. Okay, go ahead and run the command again. And you can see now that it's reported the Postgres connection was established and Stripe test API call was successful. So Remix has made contact with both of the systems that we want to speak to. Mm -hmm. So why don't you go ahead into the, uh, actually open Postgres again, just to show that everything is empty and select star from products. Yep, mm -hmm. okay, go back to the Stripe dashboard and create a product with a price, the product catalog. $10 for James's product. Wow. And I buy that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sometimes it takes a second to sync, but head back to the Postgres query tool and select star from products. Yep. And there it is, James's product. We should also have an item in prices. Mm -hmm. Select that. This one here. Yep, right there. And let's add a new price because I want to show that we can have now multiple prices in multiple currencies for each product. So go back to the Stripe dashboard, click into the product, and add a new price in, I don't know, euros or something. Yeah, you can just click into James's product right there. Hit the plus for pricing, and give me something in euros. Let's make it eight euros. Mm. Go to account for the exchange. <laughs> Create price. Okay, and it should sync back to our database. So, so if you select from price. prices. Yep. So as you can see, we have the product ID, which we can use to say, hey, this is my product, and this is the price based in the, uh, the country that my user is visiting me from. Mm -hmm. So if you're an AI startup and you're selling around the world, this would be a really great way for your internal web application to get dynamic pricing data from Stripe. Mm -hmm. Now this is the ideal situation where we have separated our price and products tables, but not everyone has done that. Mm -hmm. So I want to do, I want to give an example where we have just a single products table with a price column. Okay. Probably a pretty common situation. Yep. So go back to the guide, and there are some commands to alter our Postgres database to fit that new 
structure. Yep, you can just scroll on. I'll tell you when to stop. And here we go. So we're going to be creating this table where we have an ID, which is just an auto incrementing integer. By the way, that will be stored in the Stripe metadata. A Stripe ID, which is the text that Stripe assigns to each product, product name and price. Mm -hmm. Scroll on and there should be a couple of table alteration queries. Go ahead and run those two drop tables. Oh, there it is right there. And there's also a create table command for you. Yep, and that would have been in the guide. Mm -hmm. Now we can scroll on in the guide. Yep, there it is. Mm -hmm. yep. And now we need to change the data models because our business now, in this example, does not have separate price and product canonical data models. We just have a product model with a price. So copy that and change the product.json file. Price, product second. Yeah. Yep. And you can actually delete the price.json file because this business does not have the concept of a price as a separate object from the product. Yeah. And I believe there's some alterations to the remix files. So go ahead and copy those. Yep. And then for this one, I'd recommend copying just from receive mixer down. Yeah. So not to replace the API key. And what these new remix files are going to do is anytime a price or a product object comes in, we're going to create a product object. So I actually have an example here that I'm going to show you before we actually do it. When we create a product in the Stripe dashboard with a price, Stripe actually sends us two webhooks. It sends us a product webhook, probably first, but not always, and then a price webhook. And what we need to do is we need to take the ID from the product object that they sent us and the product field from the price object they sent us because those are the same thing. They're basically foreign keys to each other. And we need to marshal that into our canonical data model, our business's view of what a product is. And we call that field Stripe ID mm -hmm. because ID is already taken by something that we have in our database and we're not going to be changing that. We also need the name from the product Nothing is renamed, and unit amount needs to become price. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen, actually, is Stripe is going to send us two webhooks. They're going to send us a price object and a product object. The remix files will then change the name of things and marshal it into a canonical data model object. Mm -hmm. These are valid data objects according to our business. And then we'll make item potent upserts into our database. It actually doesn't matter which one we do first because they both have the same unique Stripe ID key. Mm -hmm. So the first one will be a create, the next one will be an update. Mm -hmm. So we'll have two incoming objects, but eventually they will become just one record in our database, just the way that our canonical data model says so. So you can control C in the command line a few times, and then we'll have to remove the image again. Allow me. Uh, oh, got cat blocks on. Okay, and head back to the blog post. There should be a restart command. Just here? Uh, that was the oh, command yeah. I just ran. Oh, wait. Okay. And everything connected successfully. You can now go back to the Stripe dashboard and just add some products. The enterprising entrepreneur you are. <laughs> I'll just click yeah. back to the product, product catalog. catalog yeah. yeah. Create product. I'm going to call this Ben's product. Yeah. It's more expensive. It's twenty dollars. Nice. Okay. Okay. And if you head to our database query tool. 
and select star from products, it should be at the top. We now have our product with a price. Yeah. And the last behavior that I want to showcase, if you'll go back to the product uh, dashboard in Stripe, just go to Ben's product and create a new price for it. So business is good. He's going to raise the price. $25? Sure. And head on back to the query tool. You can now see that anytime we create a new price for a product, it will then update in our database. Yeah. So that's it. That's the demo. And deletes, updates, all of that stuff works. Great. Well, thanks very much for walking us through. This is a fantastic tool. If you want to see more about this, uh, Cal has a presentation that will be available on YouTube very shortly. But otherwise, if you want to look and play with for yourself, go to sqlpipe.com forward slash products forward slash remix. Cal, thank you very much. Thanks, everybody.